Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Impromptu Live. Uh, I'll just get into it. So I, I have a local YouTube channel that I use to like analyze my specific local areas and I don't want to plug it or promote it because I mean, unless you're specifically looking for like Arizona based content um, organically, I want you to find it. But if you're not, you know, organically looking for it, then don't look for it. So anyways, I did a city today. And this city is not, I mean, I live near it, but not too close to it. And most of the cities I, I do research on, I look up actives, I look up pendings, I look up like like last three or four years, what's happened and kind of just trying to give a, a somewhat prediction based off the data. And most house cities I've done have been pretty positive. Like, hey, it's trending up prices. It's a pr even though there's all this talk and chatter, there's these specific cities that are just trending upward in value ever since that drop that happened. Um, and then, and then I talk about like other cities that like, okay, well the, the, yes, the listings are just too low for anything to happen, even though pending that anyways, you get the point. So I did a city and I want to kind of guide you through this. So that way you can find this on your own. Now I get it. You might not be able to have access to all the tools and data, but having the knowledge to be able to pull up this data, or at least being able to ask somebody who might have access to the data, can you pull up this, this, and this? you'll be a little more, you know, be able to have a conversation and be able to accurately predict if you're actually are going to should be buying in the area that you're looking in, throwing in a lot of words there. I apologize for the word soup. Everybody who's here live. Hi, how you doing? Hope you're having a good day. So here's the thing. Let's first get an idea of what I'm talking about. Let me pull up a quick search here. Screen share. There you go. Okay. Just want to make sure it's working. There you go. So that city that I'm focusing on today is Surprise, Arizona, which is actually a pretty big city. It's grown a lot. But one interesting thing that's happened in the city is, well, let me show you. Surprise. 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 So actual surprise like is it here and as you can tell it's pretty cop well, pretty populated here okay it looks like sun city grand which is a retirement community is is making up a lot of them but let's just kind of look at it before let's just kind of stay tuned and watch the ride for a bit cool name for a city i know right <laughs> but as you can see up here there's a lot of new builds that are being built up here and I'm afraid that this might be creating a little bit over saturation because if it has technically it's the city of surprise, but it's like way, it's like you have to get on the freeway. And like, I always joke, it's you're almost in Vegas because you follow this, you keep going up, up where well, you're in Wickenburg now. And eventually if you follow this, you are in Vegas. Oh, that's Kingman. Wait, am I lost? You're in Vegas. So it's a freeway you take past Kingman. You eventually pass the, the Grand Canyon too. Sorry, the, the Hoover Dam. But anyways, let me kind of just show you why what's concerning about this city. There's 885 houses for sale. Let's actually only focus on single family detached. There are 793 houses for sale. 
to look at the under contract number, pending number. We, we want this to be about close to that active number, but it's actually less than half, 393. So basically there are 393 houses that are currently under contract in that city, less than half, which is concerning, but hey, maybe it's just a slow month. Let's look at the previous month's numbers and see what the sold numbers were. Sold numbers, last 30 days, 294 so under contract means it's a house that went under contract in the last like usually it takes about 30 days to close so either it went on contract either yesterday to about a month ago right 30 days ago around there if it's sold that means it is officially closed and went under contract either because it closed in over the last 31 days so either went under contract 60 days ago to about 30 days ago right so we can accurately see the demand and how it's increasing or dropping and we can see here that that close number is 294 that de under that demand number is uh under 400 so we can see a little bit of increasing but it's still concerning because we're seeing it really below half but hey who knows it's just a, maybe it's just a slow time there's nothing to be worried about but let's look at the historical data just to kind of see so Monthly average sales price, we saw that big spike up. We saw that spike down. We can see here, um, it's kind of just slowly been increasing, but nothing too crazy. So we this has been pretty common. Any city you pick, and I already, let me just like pick up a random one like Tempe. Every city has experienced this giant increase, that drop. And then some of them have been increasing pretty rapidly. Some of them went up and then they went down. But surprise, surprisingly, I know, dumb, has it just slowly been peaking up. We can also see this with the median sales price. Up, slowly peaking up. Nothing too crazy to, to write home about, right? So here's the interesting part. In 2021, this is active inventory. What created this massive price increase? This is 2021 right here. What's up, Earl? Hey, Nikki. Hey, Andy, Sandra. I hope you guys are having a good day. Um, low active inventory counts, so 190 to 194. And then under contract, high, right, 400. So there's 191, 194 houses for sale, 374. These are weekly counts, so they're a little different. Surprise Arizona. You can watch it later on your computer. You'll be able to see a little more clearly. Um, so that's what, increase, what created the increase. Now, in 2022, what happened for most cities is inventory shot up because of the interest rates going up and demand dropped, which we see that here. So inventory for surprise in the act, like in the weekly counts that made things drop was as high as 919, 950, right? Demand, when things dropped, were in the low 300s. So 2023 hits, we have this active inventory effect where it kind of drops, slopes, and then increases again. Pending numbers, this is what really created uh, a little bit of a boost in 2023 and why housing market didn't crash is because there's a big spike of demand here that just happened. Right. Um, what's going on? Uh, Chi town real estate, Chicago land, Northwest and Indiana. Oh my gosh. You like name yourself every city. <laughs> Are you even a person at that point? <laughs> it's like, if I name myself, Hey, what's up Phoenix? Hey guys, it's, I'm Phoenix. Little Park Goodyear, Avondale. <laughs> Sorry, it's you, you, you got you got to do better. <laughs> Anyways, um, like my uh, or my, my name will probably be hey. Uh, it's um, Ben Jeter, Ben Jeter here. <laughs> Just name everything wrong right there. Anyways, um, so this decrease of demand is what really made these prices kind of bounce back up here. Well, at least for most cities. And here we are in 2024. Check out that active inventory count. Increase from 796 to 913. Now, remember what I said. So then I want you guys to do this. 
when you're doing your research for your specific city's specific zip codes, okay? Are the inventory counts similar to they were when inventory increased and made prices drop in 2022? Because here what we're seeing is it's increasing. It's already reached that level, right? And it's still increasing. So if history were to repeat itself and have this price reduction, then pending numbers need to be at the same level as they were before. And what we see here, remember 2022, pending numbers dropped off to the low 300s. 2024, yeah, we're still at 400, but we're only 100 away from getting to that point. And as you can see here, there's clearly a, a downtrend happening. So it's pretty clear as long as this downtrend continues and this continues to increase, our active inventory numbers and our pending numbers are going to be identical. So if that trend does continue, then should we not anticipate prices to drop again? So I recommended in that video, if you're looking to buy in the city, do not pay less price do not pay above this price. You want to buy as low as possible if you have to buy or simply just wait because there are going to be some changes now remember i always tell you guys local data local data a lot of people look at national data and scare the living you know what out of you because i say local martin national data is telling you this that i've done this for about four or five cities so far this has been the only city that has this negative effect every other city has had high demand mid or low inventory it's still looking good prices are still going up so that's why I always tell you the importance of local data and having an agent that you can find that's going to be able to provide this data historically is really important because history repeats itself. And if the numbers are identical to where they were on Tuesday, sorry, Tuesday, 2022, then this is what's concerning. Um, so yeah, it's it's really cool to have someone look at local inventory, uh, sorry, local data, Sandra, sorry, um, recent data, but ask them for the data of how things were when prices dropped. First of all, first question to ask, okay, how does your sales price bubble look? Like, is this, like, I can pretty much pick most cities here. Oh, Scottsdale's definitely different because I see Scottsdale's continuing to go up just because it's like California. It's crazy. Uh, Phoenix, um, where we have that spike up, spike down to mid 2023, or sorry, end of 2020, end of 2022, early 2023. And then what's going on here? Peoria, spike up, um, up. Right. So we got to keep like every specific city has similar trend. Figure out what that trend is for your cities. Figure out where was the peak? Where was the drop? What's been happening after the drop? So with the data I'm looking at, the only thing I can really anticipate in the specific city I'm looking at is a price crash, price drop. I want to say crash. I did kind of click bit you, you know, crash is what gets your attention, but house prices drop. I personally will look at this data and just have a buyer beware in the specific city. Cool. Not always easy to move when you're locked or jobs to family. Yeah. But anywho, um, just wanted to give this quick little live slash video out for you guys. Uh, hope this video brings some kind of clarity. Um, obviously data can be interpreted in different ways. So I'm just one loser giving you my opinion. Um, always do as much research as possible. Um, what's better, lower mortgage rate or more seller's credit? If that makes sense, like buyer lower than appraiser getting concessions. I mean, I've gotten, I've, I've talked to lenders before that are like, oh dude, the rates are going to go down. Oh, sorry. My tape, my tape fell off. Don't think it's like a disgusting mole or anything. Nothing wrong with moles. 
I had to tape around my finger because it was hurting and I decided to tape it to put pressure. Anyways, a lot of lenders like, oh, it's it's the election year. The rates are going to drop. Why would you buy it down? Don't don't ever tell people to buy the rate down. How dare you? Um, but interest rates haven't dropped yet and it's April. Is that a fact they're going up? Right? But anyways. Or lower price. I think if you had to choose A or B, I would think what's... I would think if you are in a market that prices are, are, are really like not stable, they're dropping, I would say price. Try buy it as cheap as possible. But if you're in a situation where monthly payment matters to you, then I think interest rate is what that the situation is. But I personally would never advise you to come up with 10 or 20K out of your own pocket to buy the rate down though. Use the seller's money to buy down your rate. And if you have to come up with an extra few thousand, fine. But I wouldn't go really hit the bank hard for that. Um, this market is so weird. Who's buying with these rates and high prices? Come on, just rent and let the dust settle. Uh, people that are buying right now are buying... I don't know. There's like this new... Con like people are just like tired of like it's just every the common thing i encounter i don't want to rent i hate landlords i'm tired of renting uh, i know it's not the best time for an investment but i just want to own where i live everyone i'm i'm, I'm helping has some kind of they've been burned by some sign of like, like either landlord or some kind of personal situation in the past and that's why they're not doing it sorry that's why they're doing it i mean it, it was you have to think like the 2010s even early 2020 like during the covid boom it was such a no-brainer to buy it was just like why wouldn't you buy it's the same as renting it's under two thousand dollars you're gonna make a bunch of money why why not right um and i think as the dust settles as you said more people are just like you know what I get it. It's not an investment, but I still, it's still, I still want to own. Um, Maximum Lama, great name. Renting prices have gone up in Phoenix and Scotts more than ever. Lots of mental health issues because of landlords doing stuff like this. Yeah, that, that's there's 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 something to be said about the the mental element of like living somewhere with the fear that that person if they wanted to could just take it from you like even that landlord has the intention today to hold you there forever and have you be a permanent renter next year something can happen and they can just hey we're selling the house sorry we need you to get out in about 30 days or by the end of your lease we're going to sell the house so it's just there's always like this need i think people inner their innermost desire is to have a permanent place a permanent cave if you will if we were cavemen or cave women we would have a cave that's our place or where we could hunt we could take care of our own so at the end of the day i mean that that's that with desire and you know now that i'm thought talking out loud i think at the end of the day there's always going to be people that or, or want to empower themselves, right? And have their own place. Renee says, our Tempe rent went up to $600 for a bedroom, two bath to 2,800. Now they're struggling to find renters to fill their properties. Yeah, I don't anticipate the high rents to to to, uh, to be there for a long time. I'd be interested in seeing what Tempe market's going like. Um, probably do that tomorrow. I do it every morning. Um, but I thought it was interesting. So I thought I'd come share it with you guys. So I hope it brought some value. Hope everyone for stopping by. Thanks for stopping by. Appreciate you um like to always go live randomly here so feel free to like subscribe do your thing uh appreciate everyone 